Hello listener, I'm Kenny Adinka Hadidewe, the senior pastor of the Safe Haven Christian Church and host of your shelter. I welcome you to today's broadcast. You are about to listen to a message that I believe is going to transform your life forever. So I would like you to sit back and be relaxed and enjoy the word of God as the revelation comes to you. I will speak with you after the broadcast. You are blessed in Jesus' name. That is what immortality is. That is what a Pentecostal experiences. That is what is supposed to be the Pentecostal expression. Now, go to, go to verse 5, man. Now, he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is this. Now, he that has prepared us for this thing we are speaking about is this. What is this thing we are talking about? A condition where immortality swallows loads of mortality. We have been prepared for that. Let's go to other translations now so that I can clear. Verse 5. Good news. Everybody, let's read it together. God is the one who has prepared us for this change. What is the change? Immortality. Covering up mortality. And he gave us his spirit as the guarantee of all that he has in store for us. One, one, one translation says he has given us his spirit as a down payment for this life of bliss. Message translation, please. Everybody, let's read. The spirit of God wets our appetite. Open it to You want to buy Dodo Kiri? You know, there are times they sell stale ones. I say, I share a good buy When we were small, and they tell us to go and buy uh, a car, a car, um, what do they call it? A kosher. We'll get there. There is a very small one that they will prepare. Tafima Yewo. Is she will thank you. So I'm very call Kinika. Is she would that you will they will toll you from house before you buy? Ask for a she will. They open it, press it, check it. Is it hard? Is it soft? Is it warm? Whatever. If you are satisfied, then you can pick. If you are not satisfied, you leave, you go and buy elsewhere. Do you understand me? You want to buy Gary now. Gary that Gary that show look that look that oh yeah, Now that is what the Holy Spirit is supposed to be. Everything God ever promises us at all. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot just believe that it is possible. It's the Holy Spirit that will make us believe, uh, that will make us have an experience of a healthy life that is not going to be defeated by sicknesses and disease. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. I told you about my friend that said that nobody can tell him that salvation does not bring about changes into people's life. By demonic and, and occultic oppression, he had lost his brilliance to the camp of the enemy. And one way or the other, sitting in front of his house. Now listen, the spirit of backwardness, no one be afflicted. Now listen, how could somebody that was coming first in his class now begin now have to begin repeating primary one twice, primary two twice, primary three twice? So that means his mates are in secondary school when he's still in primary three. And he was sitting right in front of the house, and somebody was preaching the gospel and ministered to him, and he gave his life to Jesus. He said, two weeks. After that, sitting in the classroom, something just opened like this. And I found that my brilliance was restored. He said, I, I could attribute it to the fact that that person prayed to me and I gave my life to Jesus. If you meet him and you speak one-on-one, -on -one, you know that he's a very intelligent and brilliant man. Now listen to me. It was his mortal life that was afflicted by that occultic expression. The Spirit of God entered into him at salvation and undid that work of hell. Now listen to me. That was a dosage of it. It can continue to happen. And the degree to which he now cooperates with the Spirit of God is the degree to which he will continue to overcome. Thanks be unto God, who always causes us to triumph. That means be ogunpo. To bashin sopo ogunpo, no man so triumph. That should be the mentality. But that triumph can never be there without you engaging the Spirit of God. It's the power of God. If God boasts of anything he can do at all, God himself is not going to come down to do it. It is the power of the Spirit that it does anything. If God wants to achieve anything at all, He relies on the power of the Spirit to make it to happen. And that's the reason the Spirit was given to us. Not just to speak in tongues. 
That was the reason spirit was God to give was given to us, not just to be led. After being led, what came out of it? The spirit of God works our appetite by giving us a taste of what is ahead. By giving us a taste of what is ahead. So if I have a measure of victory now by the spirit of God, I know that there are more victories in front. If I have a measure of my needs being met miraculously, then I know that more other needs can be met miraculously. If I have measures of divine intervention now, I know there are loads of divine interventions ahead. If I've enjoyed measures of favor now, then I know there are measures of favor, greater measures of favor that are ahead. Now, let me tell you something. The issue they gave me is a small meal. And it's a small size thing. The one I want to eat is bigger. Are you getting me? If I'm satisfied with the shoe, then the bigger one is going to give me greater things. Greater pleasure. Now, let's run through one or two other scriptures for us to know the role and the functions of the Holy Ghost in our life. Um, turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 1. Glory be to God. Ephesians 1 13. Let's read together, everybody. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye had the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So that means there is a gap between believing, you understand? Or the first experience is believing. Then the next one is a silly. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Now, excuse me, listen. What is a seal? A seal is a branding, an identity given to somebody. And we seal a person for the sake of other people. To have an idea of what way and manner they can relate to the one we have sealed. <laughs> have you seen? I know a, an elderly man, a retired policeman. So we met at the mechanic workshop, but he's my friend. He must be close to Haiti, but he's my friend. You understand? No, that kind of relationship very good man and said in his neighborhood there was a policeman rearing uh, what they call these things Tolutolo was the name Toki he said and thieves came and they packed everything he said Mama, I'm a boy, yeah. he said that is the way he will know if that guy the owner of the Toki is a genuine policeman or not? He said, Oli will me down when I was in actual active service. I said, Daddy, explain. He said, I went to work in my station, Ijabode, and they called me from home because when I was traveling, I told them I have clothes on the line. They should help me pack it in case it rains. And so they called me that before they got to the line, they found out that thieves have taken everything. He said, I asked them, Did they take everything? He said, yes. He said, I said, my worry. <laughs> he said, by the time I came back, I knew where to go to. He said, and I went there. And I said, eh, they took my cloth. Oh. He said, they told me, describe your cloth. He said, I described it to them. He said, they came back again. He said, is there everything they took or saw? He said, I said, they took everything. He said, I said, give a description again. Because there is a laundry man whose clothes that washed clothes and thieves took all the clothes. We want to know if those ones are isn't so. He said they brought everything to me in total, intact. I said, What do you mean, Daddy? Where did you go? He said, Momo Gabu go on. As a policeman, he said, So if they stole his talkie, he should know where <laughs> he should know who those ones were reporting to. All he needed to do is to approach the guy. They took my talk. He said they would give him everything completely. You know what? That's a seal. That's a seal. A seal of you don't touch what belongs to this man. 
a seal of even when you are doing your way you don't come near here so when they say the holy spirit is our seal sir that's the meaning i hope you are learning to begin to respect the holy ghost that it goes beyond mozali like it to do as you were doing the worship as some of you are too distant from the holy ghost because there is no way you will know the holy ghost and you are in connection with the holy ghost and they are singing and doing like this so it shows that the inspiration side to the holy ghost the first experience is even gone it's not there in whom we also trusted after that you had the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom after that you believe you were sealed with that holy spirit of promise first corinthians chapter one did i say first corinthians chapter one no ephesians 4 verse 30 ephesians 4 30 is it there And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Did you see that? The same thing is calling, is saying we are sealed by the Holy Ghost, isn't it? Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. Please write down these scriptures and go through them. Are we ready? Yes, Who hath also sealed us? Do you notice that this seal, seal, seal is everywhere? Who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts? Can we have this in the good news, please? Everybody, let's read this together. One, two, go. Who has placed his mark of ownership upon us? Oh, I didn't even know the good news puts it this way. Can you, everything I was explaining about that policeman, I think, is clear now. Read it again. Who has placed his mark of ownership upon us and who has given us the Holy Spirit in our hearts as the guarantee of all that he has in store for us? A guarantee. A guarantee. Okay, let's leave it there. Having understood this now, I want us to now move a step further. There are people in the scriptures that engage themselves with the Holy Ghost and it made a difference. The difference it made in them is what, is, what should be made in us as well. Now listen, in Ephesus, in Ephesus, uh, let me sh briefly show you the power of the Holy Ghost. What the Holy Ghost is given to do is this. Look at this. My wife is here. She's occupying this territory, right? She's occupying this territory. Can you stand up? Okay, don't stand up. Just put your hand. Funny enough, I don't like fan too much. She likes fan a lot. So there have been times that one person will have to leave the room for the other because of fun. You understand? Now, interests differ at least from the perspective I mean, from the fan issue right she's enjoying this fan now and i have come here i don't want this fan so somebody must leave if there's not going to be wala with the fan if the spirit of darkness is ruling and reigning in a man's life he has his peculiarities the spirit of defeat spirit of lack of breakthrough 
it has its own peculiarities. You see, the owner of the life may not like it, but the spirit is having its fun. Now, the Holy Spirit is now introduced to the fellow. What the Holy Spirit will do is to first of all signal to that spirit that has been finding expression is that I don't want this. And that spirit will say, this is my territory. You understand me? When you, as the believer, now know the functions of the Holy Spirit in your life, and you are ready to engage him, get involved with him, partner with him, to do what he wants to do successfully, the Spirit of God will, no, don't let it be easy, We eventually unseat this particular one, and take over the territory, chasing it somewhere else. If I sit here now, the first thing I do is to put up this fan. Let's say the blowing of the fan means oppression. The Holy Spirit puts up the fan of oppression. So the life of the person is no longer oppressed. So there are people in the scriptures that went through such experiences. So it's a territory thing. It's a territory taking thing. It's an unseating of powers thing. That's what the Holy Ghost is for. That's another way to describe putting on immortality upon mortality. Now, quickly go to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. Let me show you the role a preacher plays. What I'm sharing now, let me quickly, everything I'm doing now, let me quickly show you. Uh, King James, please. Oh, leave it, leave it. I think this, this translation is interesting. And I want us all to read it. Are we set? Read, everybody. He saved us and called us to be his own people. Not because of what we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. He gave us this grace by means of Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. But now it has been revealed to us through the coming of our Savior, Christ Jesus. He has ended the power of death and through the gospel has revealed what? What am I doing now? I'm revealing immortal life. I'm explaining immortal life. I'm making it easier for you to understand what it means, what immortal life means. And how to engage it and how to employ it and how to use it. Now, next verse, please. 11. Everybody read. God has appointed me as an apostle and teacher to proclaim the good news. So the proclaiming of the good news is to make immortality available to men. Now, change that verse 10 to, to King James. The, there is a forceful manner that the King James has put it. Everybody read. But it's now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. He has brought what? Life and immortality to light through the gospel. There is a difference between life and immortality. Sir. Life is responsible for immortality. So it's life first, then it translates into immortality. And it all comes through the gospel. If somebody promises you, you are having a problem with death, and say, man, worry, man, ben, you're joking here, I'll be skin, come what? Don't promise it. Now listen, is it the gospel? If it is not the gospel, it cannot give you immortality. It may be promising, but it's not immortality it can offer. Hey, hey, damn it, home. Let me show you this. If money is in the hand of Jesus, if money is in the hand of Jesus, it ceases to be ordinary money. It is now money that has life and immortality inside it. So if they give such money to a man that is cursed, occultically cursed, to go and do business with, that money will not suffer the power of the curse again. If such, such money, if, if such person does not take money from there and he goes for a loan, there is no spiritual backing for that loan, for that money coming from loan. He takes it and the forces that are destroying money in his hand destroys the loan. You can now hear why Christians commit suicide at times. 
Why? Because that promise was not immortality promise. It's only through the means of the gospel that anything immortality can come. How many of you watched the series of if our local of our local uh, episode particularly? How many of you? The woman was barren. I've been looking for child. So 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 went to meet the priest, and the priest said, "I've checked through the oracle. There are no good children on ground now. It's only one child, and it's a bad child." Out of desperation, she said she wanted the child. Abi, is and she took the child. So, serially, whatever the child wanted, she will give the child. And at the peak, the child came one day, said she wanted a human life. And the man said, and went ahead to kill the mother. And of course, they were trying to teach a lesson that don't be desperate in life for just anything. Now listen, there are sources that provide solutions that are not immortality solution. You know, was it Pastor Fadi's wife that was telling us that, no, it was not her. They uncovered in one great hospital in Nigeria, teaching hospital in Nigeria, they uncovered some great secrets. How some women knew that there was no way their husband could father a child. And so they went to connive with doctors and whatever. We are going to make it a secret. They know, they will take the picture of the man, the genotype, DNA structure and everything. And they will go and meet medical students who look so much like the man. And they will promise money. And they will run other tests. And it looks like the DNA structure of that student and that man so much like match. So if they have to do blood transfusion, the genotype matches. And they will ask the child, the medical student, if you can give your sperm, there is a reward of one million naira. And guys were doing it. And they were using it to inseminate these women and they were getting pregnant. And the husband is rejoicing. Eventually, our no law malaya. The child came out looking like the husband. They so much did it that the guy that donated the spam does not know who they used the spam for. <laughs> so that it will not boomerang. But she alone already let the actually in. Now that is not immortality. Because one way or the other, something will happen. But through the gospel, through the gospel. The same man that he said that cannot father a child will end up fathering a child. I read an account of a, an American superstar who said the medical team taking care of me eventually came around and said, we are very sorry to tell you this, that we can no longer continue with your treatment. It's obvious you can't make it. We'd like you to call your family members and friends and relatives you don't have more than 72 hours just to wish them a goodbye he said in pains and in agony i called everybody they came around they were crying and waving goodbye at me he said, i am here i am years after i'm still around this time around made whole by the gospel made whole by the gospel not just the gospel but the mortality inside the gospel not just immortality inside the gospel, immortality made available by the Spirit. We belong to the dispensation of the Holy Ghost now. Are you getting me? The only reason why Jesus looks like the emphasis is because the Spirit is working for Jesus. But listen, you are going to do yourself a lot of injustice when you know everything about Jesus, but not the Spirit that is working for you. In your life. I guess somebody has been blessed. How do we engage the spirit? Second Corinthians chapter 13. Before I go to that, go to 1 Corinthians 12. Let me show you something. 
Pastor, can you come? Boyga, come. Daddy, can you come, sir? Everybody, look at that. This is the Holy Ghost. This is the Son, Jesus. And this is God, the Father. They constitute what is called the Trinity. The three of them are working together. But there is a supposed division of labor here. Each one of them is a master at something. You see? Pay attention. Oh no, please listen to this. Each one of them is a master at something. What God is supposed to do as a part of the Trinity, He may not be able to do it when these are not in shape. Or when the believer, what God is supposed to do through a believer or in the life of a believer, he may not be able to accomplish when the believer is not in good shape with him. No, this is the Holy Ghost, right? What God wants to do, he may not be able to do when the Holy Ghost, when the believer is not in good shape with the Holy Ghost and with Jesus. Now, the combination of the efforts of the three members of the Trinity, eh? is what is called the Pentecostal experience. God wants to initiate a move that a yoke over a lineage is broken. They said every woman eats 35 and once every woman eats 35 in that family they must die. So it has even become a mentality of defeat that they rush their children into marriage because they are expecting that by 35. You know there are places like that where, where people have submitted to defeat. You know there are places like that. Now, so God wants to make a move. What is the move to break that yoke? That no woman in that lineage will die at 35 any longer. For him to achieve that. Now, pay attention. That is because God is the mastermind of everything. For him to achieve that, he needs the services of the Holy Ghost and Jesus. In fact, they are the initiators. I mean, they are the implementers of that thing. Now pay attention. The Holy Ghost makes a supply of what is called the gifts of the Spirit to achieve that purpose. It can be operating through a man of God or through the life of the fellow himself. The Holy Ghost makes a contribution of what is called the gifts of the Holy Ghost. I don't know, like, but the power of the Spirit where they are just gifts of the Holy Ghost in different measures and colors. Do you understand? Me? Then, Jesus does the job of alignment, placing the person in the right position for what God wants to do to happen. A woman died in Acts of the Apostles. Pay attention, oh, there is never coincidence in Pentecostal operations. By the name Dorcas, Tabitha. And while they were mourning her, the women brought out coats that she had made, probably for them or whatever. The Bible says when the disciples heard, they washed their body and they placed it in the upper chamber. But they heard that Peter was nearby. Here. They heard that what? Peter was nearby. So they sent message to Peter to come. And Peter came and immediately Peter came, the woman started showing her the clothes that she probably made for them. And Peter told them to get out of the room. Eventually, raised the woman from the dead. What was it that God wanted to do? God wanted to defeat the spirit of death over the life of the woman. That was what God had in mind. How did God do it? Or what was Jesus' own contribution? Make sure that Peter was nearby. Mm. Did the work of alignment that Peter was nearby. The third thing, the Holy Ghost made sure the anointing was on Peter. Do you get it? What other thing contributed to the whole thing? The women, the Bible said they were weeping and showing the cross that she, won't, that, that she made for them. It was a, those were intercessions. Giving God reasons why the woman should not die. 
is somebody listening here? All these are Pentecostal operations. Now, while the three of them are standing, let's now read this passage. So I will explain and we'll begin to see. I think one of the mistakes we made before, because chapter 12 is dedicated exclusively or more, yeah, exclusively to the manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit. The roles of Jesus and of God in this passage we have often neglected. And we don't actually see how they come in into the Pentecostal operations. Now, let's start from verse 3. Four. Everybody, let's read together. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Diversities there means different. Now there are different types of gifts, but the same spirit. In other words, when it comes, when it comes to the gift of the spirit, when it comes to gifts, gift of power, gifts of revelation, gift of inspiration, the Holy Ghost is in charge. Inside that, inside those gifts, you are going to have. The Spirit of God just spoke to me. Inside those gifts, you are going to have things like, I just saw something now. I just had something now. Inside that one, you are going to see, in Jesus' name, come out. Those are gifts of the Spirit. The Spirit of God is in operation. Where he is dormant, you won't see the demons living. Where he is dormant, you are going to remain confused. There is no inspiration anywhere. Where he is dormant, you are not going to have directions. So, you can just begin to go into business with a mentality of chance. Now, you hear that. If <laughs> two years ago, it looked like Coca-Cola and everything was good. Abi, I think from last year, it's around 15 naira takoki. Abi, packet. And I think, and my man, JBA, 500, almost, killing lori, killing two years ago, 18 to, in a matter of one year. And I remember that Baba telling me, it's a turn church, Jebere. That was his own words. It didn't turn out that way. You know, a lot of people rushed into that business. Much a jazz, you know, a japa. Some of them ran into death and believers inclusive. Because the other people were too long in it. What I've been told, what did Mama tell you? Did Mama had something? He said, I'm diverting business from that direction. Is that one? I'm looking in some other direction of business. Now, can you imagine? But with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Ghost, oh, Nisho short. Why? Because what it takes to see the future ahead is in those gifts of the Spirit. He said, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways and He shall direct your path. When you see a believer that you are pressuring, oh, yeah, go to take decision and say, I'm still waiting on God. Please respect the fellow. It doesn't matter how long it's lasting. And you may say, oh, yeah, go to pick it. No, now listen, I see people putting some ladies under pressure. And for the past six months, the brother has been troubling you. You are not saying you have not had God. Every day. Now, you only encourage her that if you have not been praying, please pray. Don't keep this guy in suspense or whatever. Too many ladies have been rushed into just deciding. But she had a fear. What is the fear? I want to be sure it is God. She may not have set out time, encourage her to set out time. Because when the regret comes, they won't partake of the regret. It's hard that will do. Isn't it amazing? I was somewhere recently they were talking about a particular Christian woman that wants to do a program. I said, if these people knew about this woman, they won't be celebrating this program she wants to do. I know her completely. I know the glory upon her life. I know the grace of God upon her life. I know where she made a mistake, a fatal mistake. And I know that the rest of what she's doing now is just a cover up and a patch up. I know. And unless she was guided right, she wouldn't have made that mistake. So, this is the Holy Ghost. Now, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Next verse, please. And there are differences of 
administrations, but the same law. Administrations here means placement. Are you hearing? I said it was not ordinary. Only God knows what Peter came to do. Near where Dorcas was going to die. The devil thought he had his way. I've killed her. But over and above that, Jesus ensured that while you are doing the work of killing this woman, while you are doing the work of making her to sl sleep in the bedroom and she hit her head against the wall, against her and she died. While you are doing the work of making her to die in a car accident, I have my servant that is carrying my spirit around. So Jesus ensured that that one came around and positioned Peter. Who was carrying these when this woman was done? And so it was easy for God to move. What was the move of God about? Defeat the spirit of death. So God moved. So there are times that God wants to move. But when these are not in proper alignment, there is a problem. Excuse me, sir. When the Holy Ghost, Jesus, through the Holy Ghost, tells you, wake up. Just stroll towards the gate. It's because there is an alignment of your favor around the gate. Jesus has already done a job. You now hear something. All over in King Jade, you must go mad if I did you. Understand? These are Pentecostal experiences, but it's not supposed to be once in a while. They are not supposed to be left to chance. Are you hearing me? I hardly attend programs in town, Christian. I hardly do. But I told you I attended one about two Sundays ago. I knew God told me to attend. And I eventually saw the reason why I attended. So there was an alignment. Even the organizer of the meeting still sent me a message yesterday thanking me for, for coming around. Now, there was an alignment. And I eventually... So I had some money with me, some ministry money and my personal money. I said, Lord, where am I going? This man has blessed me this first night. You understand? He's not a man of God. Now listen, I don't give to tap into grace. That's the spirit of Simon the sorcerer. You understand? But I give to advance a gospel committed into somebody's hand. When I give into that, is grace I will now partake of. Are you hearing? So how do I advance what this man is doing? So I took my money, took money, ministry money, put everything together, and I went to meet the man. And immediately I get very simple man. Warono. Warono big ba. Ancient utterances. You know, shortly before that, he explained what a conga means. He said, Abraham dug a well. No, Jacob dug a well. He drank out of it. His children drank out of it. His animals drank out of it. Generations after were drinking out of it. So the man himself explained what a conga means. Then he concluded, you should not start a business and your children will not be able to eat out of it. That was what the man said. He said, you should not start a venture and generations after are not still eating out of it. Have you met me, Gori? Now, it's not as if I don't know the principle, but not from that perspective. So when he told me, Konga, Onikbe, save him, let me walk. Ole Kulai Lai. Now listen, to see the work of alignment. See his own inspiration. Gift of the Spirit, inspiration. Inspiring those words. Do you understand me? Placing it on me. That was what God wanted to do when he inspired me to go for the meeting. That was what God was moving to do. Are you here, please? You're welcome back. I believe you have been tremendously blessed by the message you just listened to. And I trust God that the grace to be able to live by the revelations from it will be granted you in Jesus' name. In case you'd like to contact our ministry, you can call us on 080-9696-0855. You can as well check us on Facebook, The Safe Havens. We would like you to join us in any of our worship services one of these days. We hold our services on Sundays, 9 a.m., our Bible class on Wednesdays, 5.30 p.m., and our prayer service Fridays, 5.30 p.m. 
The church is the Safe Havens Christian Church, located directly opposite Okwala Shopping Complex, Capital Area, Oshubu, Oshun State, Nigeria. The entire family of the Safe Haven Christian Church will be glad to have you one of these days. God bless you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Your faith has made